as I was spending time in prayer, this is what the Lord spoke to my heart, and I want to share this with you. He said, America, America, you foolish nation, you thought you could exist without me. You abandoned me and my altar to embrace your freedom and democracy. But what you received was bondage and hypocrisy. You've played the whore with so many lovers that your beauty has faded, your appeal has diminished. O oh, heart of the night, your lovers are abandoning you. Your services are no longer needed. As a dying man, you gasp for air. You reach for help, but no one can save you. America, this is your last breath. Inhale deeply and hold on to what you have left, for soon death will be your companion and sorrow will be your comforter. Misery is surely at your door. America, your wound is fatal. Your plans of escape are futile. America, this is your last breath. To my church, listen to this, decouple yourselves from this corpse that will surely be. Let the dead bury the dead. Rescue those whose hands are stretched out, but let the prideful perish in their foolish ways. Heavenly Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the unction to preach this message today that is like fire shut up in my bones. Help me to declare it and decree it, Father God, with clarity. Let no man remember my name nor the name of this church, but let them remember the name that's above every single name. I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen and amen. The title of this message is called America's Last Breath. America's Last Breath. Again, it's going to be a harsh message because we live in a nation where we have normalcy bias. We have a disconnect because we still believe in the so-called American dream. We believe that tomorrow will be a better day and that we're just going through a road bump, if you will, or a pothole in life, and we're going to have a political entity that's going to stand up and fix it. I wish that were true, but we've heard it cycle after cycle after cycle, it's turned into a circus, and we're no better. We're like the woman with the issue of blood who has gone to many physicians but could not find remedy but only found brokenness. And our nation is broke today. We're in deep trouble financially. We're in deep trouble in the military. We're in deep trouble in every aspect of society. America is in decay and America will not rebound as many think that they're going to do. And how do I know? Because the Bible is very expressive in its prophetic reality that what happens to the nations of the world when they turn against God, they turn into hell. And when nations leave God and the altar of righteousness and holiness, then they feed upon themselves with perversion. And lust burns in them like a fever, and they find themselves in deep trouble. The wars that you're seeing today across this planet are not just against religions and against boundaries and ideologies. It is a war against God because man refuses to bow, man refuses to bend, man refuses to accept and acknowledge an almighty God and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and have his heart cleansed by the power of the blood. Because when a man is born again, he changes his ways. He puts down the weapons of warfare that are carnal and picks up truth and picks up life and gives and becomes an agent of love. And so today I am not worried about wars and rumors of wars because Jesus said they would be so. And if he said so, it's okay with me. Though I don't like what I see, I understand it's going to be okay. But what you and most Americans and most people, I should say, don't realize is that as you watch what's happening in the Middle East, it is a signal to what's going to happen in the United States. In other words, it is the death knell for us. 
that we are coming to the place that we will no longer be a significant nation to the world. That's Bible prophecy. And I want to show you what God had to say today. And the message is called America's Last Breath. It's exactly what he spoke to me. And I want you to go to Amos chapter 4. Are you going to help me today? If not, I'm going to preach by myself. I got to get this out of me before you can get your chili dog today. America's last breath. I wish I had a message today about Peter Cottontail and all the happy stuff. But actually, if you learn prophecy and understand the Word of God, it is a great message because it's a message that tells us that we're going to see the king. It's a message that tells us that God is going to fold this thing up. He's going to wrap this thing up. And that all the things of this world are going to grow so strangely dim. But we've got Revelation Road to go through. We've got trials and tribulations and testings to go through. And we have to get there. And we need preachers. We need shepherds who are willing to stand in front of the people with their glare and their fangs hanging out of their mouth and tell them this is the way it's going to be. You may not like it and it may not be a popular message, but nonetheless, here you go. Are you there in Amos? I know it takes you a little while to find Amos. Amos chapter 4, America's last breath. Now, Amos was not a professional prophet. Let's begin by giving a little historical understanding he was more considered a master shepherd. He was raised as a southern in, southerner in Tekoa, and he went up into Bethel. That's where God sent him to the north. And he said, I want you to prophesy to a stiff-necked, rebellious people. I want you to prophesy to those who have been paganized, who once walked in the power of my spirit, who once believed in the law, who believed in covenant, who believed in righteousness, and were stewards, if you will, of what was right and holy. But they have been backslidden. They have become rebellious. They refuse to follow the way of the Lamb, follow the way of Jehovah, the way of the law, and now they find themselves in deep trouble. So, Amos, I want you to go prophesy to them. I want you to know something today that God's not looking for professional preachers. He's not looking for professional pastors and for church leaders. He's looking for those that have a heart after him that are willing to go to Bethel that are willing to go to the highways and the hedges and willing to go to Washington and willing to go here and go there and preach the blessed message of Jesus Christ. For I believe that God is raising up the faceless, the nameless men and women of God who are willing to stand strong in the power of God's might no matter what's happening around them. I believe that God's raising up apostolic warriors, if you will, not those that follow some creed and code of a denomination, but those that love God with all of their spirit, soul, mind, and body. I'm talking about real men who serve a real God who are not afraid to say something. They got a back like a T-rail and a face like flint. They're not afraid of what people think. They're not looking for popularity or looking for prosperity. They're blessed. I said, they're blessed. They're blessed coming in. They're blessed going out. They're blessed in the city, and they're blessed in the field. They don't need to beg nobody. You don't have to compromise when God is with you. If God be with you, who could ever be against you? You don't have to beg and mealy mouth your way through life and get up there as some preacher and just beg for everything. Is anybody with me? All you got to do is speak the word of God and believe it by faith, and he'll provide for you. And so Amos was this kind of guy. He was a master Shepherd, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, he knew how to be with the sheep. He smelled like sheep. He walked with the sheep. He cleaned up after the sheep. He beat off the wolves that tried to come in and destroy the sheep. We need some more pastors that know how to beat up on a wolf. The problem is we have too many wolves in the pulpit eating up on the sheep. But God's going to cleanse his house. I said, God's going to cleanse his house, and he'll have his way. I've been waiting for you. Are you still there in Amos? 
Amos chapter 4. Let's look at it together. Hear this word, you kind, or you cows. <laughs> Don't you love God? You bunch of mooers. The cows of Bashan. Some translations say the fattened woman. But he was speaking to a people who lived in indulgence. You bunch of cows. Isn't that nice to have your preacher call you first thing in the morning? Good morning, darling. But the truth of the matter is God's got a sense of humor because he calls it like it is. Your preacher won't do it. Your pastor won't do it. The local evangelist won't do it, but God will. I'm so glad God talks to me straight. That's all I need. I need a straight-talking God. You ever gone to the doctor and he tells you things that you need a dictionary to understand? I just want to know, am I going to live or am I going to die? And how much is it going to cost me to do either? Is anybody here? But so many times we, 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 we don't get the truth because it's candy-coated in our American pulpits and, and pastors don't want to offend nobody because, you know, Brother Broadbottom and Sister Bucketmouth is going to get mad in the church. They're going to take up their, their money. They're going to walk away. They're going to take their purse. Well, I'm glad I don't, I don't owe nobody anything. I said, I'm glad we don't owe anybody anything. See, pastors, pastors get upset with that because, you know, they always want you to, they want to act poor. So you give. Honey, I'm going to tell you, we're blessed. I want to tell you, we're blessed because God has blessed us. No denomination, no brother big bucks, no Dr. Seuss or Dr. So-and-so. God Almighty has done it. Why? Because he said he'd keep his word. He'd watch over his word. He'd perform his word. Isn't God good? I don't have to beg nobody for nothing. But he says, you bunch of cows, the cows of Bashan that are in the mountain of Samaria, in the place of plenty. God says, I see you in your indulgence. I see you, you in your obesity. I see you in your savagery and your treatment of people which oppress the poor. Isn't that funny? Usually when a, a person has wealth, they oppress everybody else. They ain't going to give you a dime. I've known millionaires that wouldn't give you a wooden nickel. Come on now. No, you need help, and they just should have did it the way I did it. Oppress the poor. Push back on the poor. Don't help the poor. It amazes me how many churches have multiplied millions of dollars in their bank accounts and they don't do anything for the poor. Oh, they may do a photo op here, a photo op there, a food pantry here, give away a couple Campbell soups. When there's so much more they can do. And don't get me wrong, there's many churches that do great things, but for the most part, it amazes me. It amazes me that a nation like America can give multiplied billions of dollars into trillions of dollars for warfare, but we can't help our communities. We can't help the victims in Maui. We can't find the missing children. We can't do anything to stop pedophilia. We're holding back on blessing their own people, but we're willing to fight wars on foreign soils that our forefather said we don't want to be entangled with. And we don't have any preachers with backbones who say something about it and preach and tell the truth. They're all the same. Somebody say, which way do you flow politically? I am a political atheist. I don't believe in none of them. They didn't get me to this point. God did. The soldiers of the past got me to this place. The blood of our forefathers got us here. The Lamb of God got us here. You try to kill us and destroy what God gave us. And we're feeding it too with our own sin. I'm going to get there in a minute. So it isn't just a politician, it's a preacher too. 
It's the church and the prostitutes that are in the church. Yeah, I love you. Don't you love me? Hear this word, you cows of Bashan. I love God. That are in the mountain of Samaria which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. In other words, serve us, feed us, give to us, just, just give me more. Isn't that the American way? Yeah. Yes, it is. I told you if we ever had an American flea market or yard sale, we could pay off the debt of the world. Everybody would have shoes. Everybody would have clothing. That's all we got to do is just empty out your stuff. Do you realize when they put you in that box, you don't take anything? Nothing. <laughs> And they're going to sell the clothes once you're gone anyway. It's the goodwill. So y'all ain't helping me, man. But no, nah, man, I got to get a new shed. I got to get another barn. I got to put, I got to have a place for my boat. Then I got to have a place for my boat's boat. You know, I got to have, I got to put a barn over that. Listen, I'm nothing wrong with having things. Don't get me wrong. We got stuff, and God's blessing us. He's going to bless us some more. But there has to come a time when you take inventory and you say, that doesn't matter. Give to the poor, man. Help those that are needy. Bless those that are hungry. Jesus said to feed the naked, feed the hungry, feed everybody. Bless everybody you can. Put some clothes on them while you're feeding them. Do something. But America's got to the point and to the place that we're more concerned about ourselves, our 401Ks, and everything that we have possessed. You can't take a thing with you. And when this economic holocaust comes and the American dollar finally crashes, what will you do if you don't have faith in God? You better have faith in God. You better put your treasures up in heaven. You better put your faith in him and say, I trust my God. No matter if there's leanness or plenty, I trust him. But he was rebuking this nation. He was rebuking Israel as he's rebuking America today. You're like a fat cow sitting on the mountain just grazing one more. Isn't that amazing? A cow can eat and then go find another piece of pasture to eat on more. That's just like us, just always wanting more. Let's just party down, man. That's the mindset of America. Let's just party. It doesn't matter. It amazes me the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and America seems to be the only nation still partying. It's absolute chaos in Europe, in the Middle East and parts of Africa. But we got NFL Sunday coming up. Get your ticket. Come on now, NCAA betting. It's on now. Come on, it's time to party now and get you some Coors Light. You might as well you know, drink light so you don't get overweight as you shove that whopper down your throat. So wave at me if you got a pulse in this house. Oh, it's the American thing, man. We got more troops headed over. Did you know that this morning? More troops are headed over to the Middle East. Go, Falcons! The Chinese are now in the Middle East, in the Mediterranean with their boats. Yeah, go, Dolphins! Come on, somebody. We have somebody that doesn't even have a brain leading the country, and everybody's still partying like it's 1999. And it ain't just that puppet, it's all the puppets. We're going to hell in a handbasket, we just partying down. <laughs> this is awesome, man. And nobody's checking the brakes. We're going downhill and nobody's pumping the brakes. We're just partying, man. And I'm seeing all this in my heart, and I'm going, we're, we're insane, we're nuts. And God's like, no, this is America's last breath. 
This is your last party, your last woohoo. It's insanity. I was in Walmart with my family uh, when we were there yesterday. I'm going to tell you right now, I, I could write sermons for years in Walmart. And I was just looking for a pair of britches. And all of a sudden, this country song come on about shaking your booty or something. A country song. Yeah, it was like somebody heard it before. You know what I'm I'm like, what? I just want a pair of jeans. I don't care about her shaking her thing. But that's America. Yeah, man. And I was like, there ain't no difference between you and, 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 and hip-hop. and I, It's all one garbage can. Now, I'm not a fuddy-duddy hole in this preacher. You can't have fun. But I'm sitting there thinking to myself, my God, we are on the edge of nuclear annihilation. I'm more worried about clod hopping and shaking what you got than we are about the reality of an almighty God that you will see him one day. And it's faster than you know. We about to blow each other up. Well, you're just a doomsday. No, I'm telling you the word. This is no joke that's happening over in the Middle East. This is no joke that's happening in Ukraine and Russia. This is no joke that's fixing to happen in Taiwan. Hello, America. America's last breath. And we just going to party now with your last breath. Honey, if it was my last breath, I would do everything I can to hold on to that breath. And I've had the unfortunate career of being a fireman. I've, I've seen people in their last moments. I've been there. I've smelled it. I've been around death. I've been around death and trauma. And it ain't fun. God reminded me of all these sights and sounds and tastes and things I went through. And I sit there and I say how horrible it was to see death. But we have no understanding of that in America of the reality because we're in this we're in this stupor we're drunken like these cows just go get me some more it don't really matter just belly up baby let's have another one i'm talking to church folk too i'm not just talking about the wine bibber i'm talking to folks that are just drunk on this world well, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to go do that. I'm going to plan for the future, and I'm going to have this. And I'm going to tear this down. I'm going to, there's nothing wrong with planning, but when you exclude God from it, that's when your equation just failed. When you have your future planned on your own self, you're a fool. I said, you're a fool. I'm a fool. If I sit there and try to plan my future without God, are you still with me? Are you mad at me? Then hold on. Verse 2, the Lord God has sworn by his holiness. That's pretty high. You can't go no further than that. That lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. Now listen, let me explain to you what's happening in America. He's saying there's coming a day when you will go into captivity. And in those days, they would take rings and put them in the nose of the prisoners. And they would tie a string to it. And the kings would, with their left hand, pull the prisoners. And with the right, they would gouge out their eyes with a sword. Read it. You'll find it in the Old Testament. That was exactly the treatment that they received. They were pulled by that ring. And God uses the illustration of the cow and says they're going to put a ring in your nose and draw you into captivity. And that's exactly what's happening in America today in our churches today. We're being drawn into captivity. We're being drawn into captivity by our pastors and by our leaders who won't tell the truth. We're being drawn into captivity by our lust and we're allowing that ring to be put in our nose just like they do today in cows and bulls. Did you know that? To draw them and to lead them to where they need to go. We're being led that way. And God says, I will allow that to happen to you. Why is America falling, Pastor? I blame it on the Democrats and I blame it on the Republicans. Honey, it's happening because of our sin and the rejection of an almighty God. America, this is our last breath, and God is drawing us into captivity. That's why we're drawing ourselves into the Middle East. 
That's why we're sending more troops over and to the Middle East. This is no game. I said this is no game. This is Bible prophecy. Now, if, this, if I'm just making something up or just taking headlines and blowing them up, that's one thing. But if I can take you to the Word of God and take you to Zechariah 14, take you to Zephaniah, and take you to Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and the book of Revelation and Daniel, if I can take you to these men and women of God who thousands of years ago prophesied this day, then you, my friend, have a problem with God and truth. Let that be your evidence. Let that be the verdict for you to decide. But it's truth. And we're messing around in our pulpits. We're playing games, and nobody's preparing. Nobody's getting ready as they ought to, and they're not seeking in an almighty God because we're too busy partying down like a fat cow. I love God. I just love how he talks. Huh? See, but most, most people can't handle God. Because you're so used to the King James E God. Oh, thou wast the loveliest, childest of minest. Hey, you fat cow. <laughs> yes, Lord. Are you with me? See, that we need it straight. Because everything else we get is crooked. Anytime you get a preacher that crooked preaches and goes around you, he's crooked. Because he's holding something back from you. Baby, don't, don't hold nothing back from me. Tell me like it is. Like I said, you go to a doctor, I want to know exactly what, sh just stop, stop your Harvard teaching. Will this go away? Are you still in the Bible? The Lord God has sworn by his holiness, and lo, these days shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and, pos and your posterity with fish. What you What's posterity? Your children. Folks, we don't have childhoods anymore, really. I mean, our schools, I can't, I'm not even going to talk about it. And we have so many teachers, so many great professional teachers watching right now that are just shaking their heads and saying, uh-huh. Turn into shooting galleries and prostitution rings and pedophilia rings and craziness and teaching doctrines of devils and paganism and teaching Islam and Chrislam and all the other Islams that get together. And we've lost a generation. They don't want nothing to do with the church because the church hasn't been real. He said, I'm going to put it in your teeth, in your mouth, and I'm going to draw your posterity. I'm going to take your whole inheritance. That's why we got craziness in our country. That's why we got little kids killing each other. It's not video games in Hollywood. It's a spirit. Mom and dad ain't done what they're supposed to do. No, no, they're too busy here. Go play a video game while I do some crack. Go play a video game while I drink my beer and watch my game. Go to, go to school and let the pagans teach you. Oh, I'm going to drop you off at Sunday school so you can learn what I learned when I was a little kid as you drive off. And we turn them over to people who wouldn't even know. Man, I'm preaching better than your amen, and it's the truth. I don't know how she got pregnant at 10, 11. I don't know how what happened. I put them, I had to send them to this camp. Did you know who you sent them with? Well, no. They had a cross. So what? So did Jim Jones. So did Charles Manson on his forehead. You see what I'm saying? And we, we, we've, we've totally turned over our children. We've turned over our inheritance to the pagans instead of watching over them. It's not like it used to be when we were growing up, when we would walk down the street and we go spend the night over at Larry's and Jim's and whoever, Jan's house, and you could trust the family because you knew them. You can't do that today. You better not even let them go to the bathroom alone until a certain age so you teach them where to kick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We still do the buddy system in my house. Y'all go right there, follow, follow, whoever, follow your brother. 
stand outside the door. Are you with me? And I'm watching like a radar, like RoboCop. Because if somebody goes in behind them that I discern ain't right, I'm going in there too. I just came in there to wash my hands. Oh, that's just over. That's just no. I'm the, I'm just, I just know the world we live in. And so it's going it's to get worse. And this is America's last breath. And I'm going to tell you something. The church needs to gear up. The church needs a man up. The church needs a cowboy up, cowgirl up. The church needs to step up and be situational aware of your life. And don't be trusting no preacher. Get that Bible in your hand and read it for yourself. Go back and study what I'm preaching. Go back and read it. Don't trust that six-foot icicle. Thank God I'm 5'11 and a half, so watch this. I tried to get six, but Uncle Sam said, no, you are what you are, boy. Anybody here? So I'm going to take these fish hooks. I'm going to put them in your jaw. I'm going to put them in your nose. I'm going to pull you like a prisoner that's led away. Watch what he says here. Let me prove to you, please, if you will. Stomach me just a few more hours. Verse 3, and you shall go out at the breaches. What is he talking about? What is the breaches? The breaches are the broken walls. Wink, wink. The south border, wink, wink. Hint, hint. Not just our border problem, but all of the breaches we have in America. God says, I will pull you, watch this, into captivity through the breaches that you made. You did this. And so I'll pull you into captivity. You didn't want to stop pornography. Preachers, you didn't want to talk about pornography. You didn't want to stop it. Now it becomes a breach, and your children and your fathers and the husbands and women are being pulled into it into captivity to where it's been proven that pornography is stronger than cocaine and heroin that's scientific that's medical facts read it study instead of typing everybody some stupid whatever read research anybody that's ever dealt with pornography you know what it's like it's like a cancer and even when you've been free for years, it still tries to pop up in your mind. And that's a fact. I'm preaching good. You may not like me, but I'm preaching good. Just keep chewing on the cud. Keep grazing. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. You fix it, get rode. It's a danger. It's pollution. It's happening in a country, and we're being pulled by those breaches. Oh, we're just going to let everybody come in. We're not going to vet anybody. We're not going to check anybody. We're just going to be ignorant and blind. And you're getting pulled into it. Oh, we're just going to put our nose where it doesn't belong. We're just going to go over here. We're going to go over there. We're going to start wars over here. We're going to fight these people. Do you recognize and realize that the wars that are happening where America is involved is because of the money, the dollar? They're trying to hold on to the last breath of the American dollar, and the only way to do it is with might. But I want you to know that might will not work. It will not because you fight against God. You're not fighting against nationalities and against religions and against foreign flags. You're fighting against an almighty God who says, I will use that as a breach to pull you into captivity. Yeah. I'm telling you, America, we're in deep trouble. Yeah. We're in deep trouble. Already talking about hitting Iran. I gave you the prophetic word, what will happen to America when we hit Iran. They're already talking. I'll read it. It's in the headlines today. They're talking about cutting the head off the snake. Well, I want you to know something. That snake wants to kill the big Satan. And while he's at it, he wants to kill the little Satan. Guess who's the big Satan? Welcome to America. Welcome to Babylon. Who's the little Satan? Israel. Does anybody have a brain? It doesn't take a prophet or a scientist to figure this out. Just read the Bible. But we want to stick our nose to it because we got nobody to believe the word. Where's our prophets? 
No, you spend four years in another administration parading around trying to get a photo op and being somebody's best friend rather than prophesying and telling the nation of the world, hey, this is, this is what's happening. There's no prophets today that stand up like they should. Very few prophets. We have profiteers, guys looking for money, guys looking to rape, guys looking to fleece, steal, kill, and destroy like the father of the devil. Boy, this introduction is good. And you shall go out of the breaches, every one, every cow, <laughs> that which is before her. And you shall cast them into the palace or a place you don't even know about, says the Lord. That's what that means. You know what? I don't know America anymore. Do you? I don't know my nation anymore. This is not what I was promised. This ain't what I read in my little American history book. This isn't prosperity for everybody. This is dog eat dog. Work so hard, you got to pay, pay so much taxes. We have businessmen that are in here, business people that are watching right now. You know it's the truth. You don't cross every I, uh, every T and dot every I, you'd be in prison. But they can send billions of dollars to a foreign country only for it to come back in kickbacks. I don't have time to go through all this, but Americans just sit back, roar back on their thumb, and say, Wow, what's on TV? You say, Pastor, what can I do about it? I can't do much about that except this. I can prepare myself for the collapse and get my head out of the place that don't belong and look at the Word of God and say, God, I trust you. No matter what they're doing, no matter what's going on, I recognize and realize that this is America's last breath, but it ain't my last breath. Not in you, because you're going to keep me alive. I trust you. You shall be cast into the place, saith the Lord. You're going to be herded out into captivity by the breaches of our enemies. Verse 4, watch what he says. Watch what God says. Please look at this. You, you say, God has a sense of humor? I'm telling you he has a sense of humor. And sometimes God is very sarcastic. So put your letters away when you get mad at me. He's sarcastic for a reason. He, when he's come to the end of dealing with a people, he finally just says, look, you're not going to get it anyways, but I'm just going to go ahead and rebuke you, dog you out, tell you like it is, you cow. Because you ain't going to figure it out anyway. You're just too stupid. Are you here? You see, I can't believe he just said that. No, you would say that outside to somebody else who didn't get it, but God says it, and you get mad at God, or you get mad at me. Let me show it to you. Can I show you in the Bible? Let's go. Are you in Amos chapter 4? Are you in verse 4? Well, let's we'll see what it says. Come to Bethel. What is Bethel? Bethel is the place where they brought the golden calf. Bethel is the place they left God in covenant and the law in righteousness and holiness and went after a golden calf. It was a place of praise, but it became a place of paganized worship. It's the place of the golden calf. Let me help you, America. You ever heard of Wall Street? You ever heard of our financial system and the mighty dollar? That's our golden calf. Oh, yeah, that's our golden calf. I got to make that money. Got to make that dollar. Got to have that thing. Well, there's nothing wrong with having it, but you can't let it have you. And the proof that it has you, you can't let go of it. Ah, see. And the beginning stage of the faith and the beginning stage of Christianity is just giving your tithe and do what you're supposed to do. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to take up an offering. And the offering is just above and beyond that tithe saying, God, I just trust you. Well, you're willing to give the government over 50%, but you won't give God 10? I don't get you. Well, they'll throw me in the jail. And God will do what? See, we don't have no fear of God. We don't have no fear of him. We, 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 no fear, we fear man more than we do God, and that's why we're paralyzed in the church. 
Man, when you get fearless faith, you can walk this terra firma. You can walk this earth and just say, you know what? God is for me. God is with me. And God's going to take care of me. I don't care about the economy. I don't care about ups and downs. I don't care about the stocks. I don't crash at all. It don't make no difference to me. My God will supply all of my needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He's going to make a way for me. Woo, glory to God. If I got to eat great value to the time that Jesus comes, that's all right. Or thrifty made. Or crispy toast holes. <laughs> Try them. That's what mom used to bring home. Checks, checks, cola. Doctor Who thunder. I'm like, what? My friends were drinking Dr. Pepper and 7-Up, and I was drinking Dr. Thunder. It was like radiator fluid. It burnt when it went down, <laughs> but it was sweet. But you know what? What were we going to do about it when we were kids? Mama said, you eat it all. <laughs> or I will kill you. Are you here? <laughs> he said, look, come to Bethel, the place of the golden calf, and transgress. This is God talking. He said, go ahead and go there and go sin. Go ahead. At Gilka, Gilgal, multiply your transgressions. Yeah, go ahead and do it, baby. Swing it. Shake it. Woo-hoo. Do it, baby. Get that tail feather moving. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. That's what he's saying. Chug it. Chug, chug, chug. Do it. Hit it. Bonk it. Do whatever you do. Go right ahead. You want to party like a 1999 party on? You said God talks that way? He just did. When he comes to the point where man will not listen, he said, go ahead and do it, you fool. You want to be an idiot? Be an idiot. You want to be a cow? Be a cow. I've warned you, and I've warned you, and I've warned you. I'm telling you, that's where we are in America today and around the world. If you want to live in sin, go ahead. That's up to you. You won't come in the house and try to fake it and try to fake to the pastor and shake your hand and my hand and smile at me and, and all those different things while you have a lustful mind and all that's up to you. Go ahead, party. Drive by and honk the horn, whatever. I'm telling you, some of these family folks, you just got to forget about them. Speak Acts 16, 31 over them, bless them and pray for them, but if they don't raise their hand up for help, move on. Get somebody else to help. Go find somebody else to help. Sitting there wasting your time. See, no, no, I don't agree with that, Pastor. I'm going to stick with him to the end. Go ahead. But there comes a time when God will say, you know what, it's enough. And he looks at America and he says, it's enough. I got, I got to preach this thing. I'm running out of time. You got, you got to stay longer. Watch. Come to Bethel and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgressions and bring your sacrifices every morning, not to him but to the pagans, and your tithes after three years, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. What's the leaven represent? Sin. And proclaim and publish the free offering. For this liketh you. Oh, you children of Israel, saith the Lord God. He said, go ahead. Go ahead and sin. Go ahead and fill up that cup of iniquity. Watch this. Fill up my cup of iniquity. Go ahead. Fill it up. Fill up my cup of wrath and indignation. Go ahead. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. That's what we want to do, America. You want to continuously do this thing? You want to rebuke God? You want to expel God? You want to reject God? You want to protect the pedophilia and all these other things you do? You want pornography to be an open sewage? You want it to be on your television screens? You want it to be in your music? You want it to be in every aspect? You want to destroy the children in their schools? Go ahead. Fill up my cup. Kind of sounds like Clean East would. Clean East would make my day. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me, man. I had these things in there so your fangs will go back up for just a second. The people get all mad when you tell the truth. Well, brother, you're going to get it straight right here. He is telling them, go ahead in sin. Go ahead, America, just do this thing. 
If that's what you want to do, go fight everybody and their mama. Go ahead and put your finger in the bear's eyeball. Lying to you and, and telling you that the, the rush that, that Russia is a fallen, fallen state and, and is incapable of doing uh, harm. Don't listen to that. The Bible's very clear what will happen in the coming days. Let, let, let me move on lest you faint from being hungry. Verse 5, talking about what the, or did I just do 5? I don't even know where I am. I'm in verse 6. He's talking about the five judgments. That's what I was looking at, five judgments. Watch this, that there were five judgments that did not break Israel. It didn't break them. It only hardened them. And that's exactly what I want to preach to you today about America's last breath. God has allowed these things as well to happen to our country, and it hasn't broken us. Watch this. Stay with me. How much longer do I have? Somebody didn't put my clock on. 30 minutes, she said. I know she said 20, but I'm taking 30. Watch verse 6. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth. Smile at me. In all of your cities and the want of bread in all of your places. What is he saying? I brought famine to you. I brought leanness to you. If you don't think we're on the verge of famine worldwide, you don't know statistics. You don't understand crop failure. You don't understand what's happening in the world today. You don't understand inflation and hyperinflation and superinflation. It doesn't just have to be famine that's caused by failures of crops. It could be disruptions in getting the items to the store. Yeah. Just think about here in Georgia when one flake falls. You can't find bread and milk. You better go find a cow cow, especially a milk cow. <laughs> because you ain't going to have none. So imagine when the supply chain falls and fails, and it will. Imagine when we're at $300 a, a, a barrel of oil. Oh, that can't happen. Are you kidding me? We're going to war in the Middle East, folks. We're going to war. We are in war. Israel in war is the United States in war. Do you understand that? Our troops have already been attacked in various parts of the Middle East. We're sending more reinforcements to protect those troops. And these have only been bottle rockets. You haven't seen guided missiles. You haven't seen super hypers hi hi uh, hypersonic missiles. You haven't, you haven't seen the big boys yet. Is anybody, this is just the Boy Scouts playing with, with, with rockets. You don't think they're going to they're gonna shut off this, the Straits of Hormuz and they're going to they're gonna stop the oil flow? Are you kidding me? See, America, you're not listening. You're too busy partying. You're too busy listening to these guys in the church that won't tell you the truth, and they're telling you everything's fine. We're out of here. We're raptured. We're gone. Don't worry about it. Well, honey, let me, let me, just, let me just say it this way. What if they are wrong and you ain't going anywhere? Then what will you do? Plan? Too late. Prepare? You can't. No, not going to be able to do it. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to go find your crazy uncle, Pentecostal Holy Roller uncle or aunt who's been mason jarring it. And for my patriots, that's not a commercial, by the way. You pick your own survival food, whatever. Hey, uncle. <laughs> They're going to be in this church begging. You know what I'm going to say? Sit down, let me feed you. Let me show you the word. I'm not going to hold that against anybody. I might call them a cow and a knucklehead, but I'm going to feed them. But you know they're coming. And that's the nice ones. Huh. Sarah, you got something in your family. I mean, there's some folk coming that ain't going to be so nice. Somebody said, why do you keep that fence up here? Really? Are you listening? Watch, 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 watch. He said famine, leanness. And then he says, you have, yet you have not returned unto me. I said leanness. Well, 
We have leanness all the time in our country. Have we turned to God? No. We turn to Monsanto and get generically, uh, genetically engineered food. It's more gen gen genetic food. I mean, what do we do? We, we just, we're going to eat bugs. The globalist wants you to eat bugs and your own feces. It's, it's true. Read it. That's what they're planning. You already don't know what you're eating when you go to fast food. And we're talking about the other day. I, uh, you eat a Whopper, and then you make one at your house. There's something different. I don't know, man. That 80-20 over there that I got from Walmart is pretty good, you know. That tastes, that tastes like Biff. That's beef if you've never been overseas. It's Biff, beef. But the other thing's like crack. Come on, folks, I don't have to reteach this. Go research it. It's out. There's not conspiracy. It's what they're doing. <sighs> Watch. Verse 7, and also I have withholding the rain from you. Everybody heard, anybody heard of drought before? How are we doing here? Not too good. Thank God for some rain. But that's not just here. That's all over the place. People write to us and say, hey, we're farmers. Please pray for us. We're up in Idaho or in Iowa and different places. Please pray. We, we, our, our cows can't go to the, to, to the creek anymore. Please pray. We do. God sends them some rain. But we don't have enough rain. And not just America, but around the world. And, and this, this is not just geoengineering and chemtrails and all. This is part of the judgment of God. It doesn't matter how it comes. It doesn't matter how the blockage comes. It doesn't matter how the breach comes. God oversees it. Now, if you want to spend a lifetime analyzing and figuring out the ABCs and putting everything together like an erecta set, go ahead. I'm just a little more simple than that. I realize he said there's going to be famine and leanness and drought, and I look around and I have it, and I say, I don't care how it got here. If them idiots are trying to kill us, whatever. God take care of me. They'll take care of the household of faith. He'll give us rain in due season. And by the looks of everybody, we're not doing too bad. In other words, you'd look nice and plump. And also I have withholding, see, I withholding the rain from you, and that were yet three months to the harvest. And I cause it to rain upon one city, and I cause it not to rain upon the other. And one piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained, uh, now uh, it didn't wither. In other words, there's no drought. So two or three cities uh, wandered into one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. In other words, you can make all kinds of geographical moves in America. Judgment will follow you. People do it all the time. Well, I'm just going to change location. Location doesn't always satisfy everything. You better know the will of God. Mm. Watch this. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So I brought judgment to you, but you didn't change. You wouldn't turn. You wouldn't come back. Verse 9, I have smitten you with blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. What is that talking about? Disease. Disease crops, weather-related destruction of produce. Anybody seen any peaches from Georgia lately? Not really, no. The, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence. The word pestilence there in the Hebrew translates plague. Anybody heard of COVID? Well, I mean, it was over the Chinese did it. Okay, I get it. It's a bioweapon, I get it. But are you listening to me? Jesus said there will be pestilences. So there's more to come. Worse than this. And there are nefarious actors. And there are people who want to do these things. But God says I'll let it happen to you because you're a perverse nation and a perverse people. It's part of judgment. I don't care how it comes. I don't care who loaded the gun and who pulled the trigger. You're dead. COVID. 
multiplied millions of people died not only from that plague but also from the shot and on and on and still losing people from long-term COVID and on and on it goes. I'm not, not here to preach this whole thing over and over again. You got to catch up if you ain't been around. How about AIDS and HIV? All these things come upon the earth. Do you think we'd have worldwide revival? Do you think America would be in revival now for all these things that come against us? Respiratory problems for our children. Polo is coming back. On and on and on. We could do this all day long for the diseases that are known and unknown. Fevers and things that we thought we eradicated are back in our schools and our children. Are we repenting of it? No. Have we called for a national day of mourning? No. Sackcloth is in ashes and saying, God, forgive us of our sin. No. And I'm going to tell you when men will weep and holler is when they ain't got no money. When you can't go to the ATM and pull out your cash because of a bail-in. What's a bail-in? You got to read. You got to study. You got to research. You got to listen to my interviews. You got to do some homework. And don't trust the Three Stooges on television to tell you you're not nightly news. You need to find out from resources that will tell you the truth. Come on, church, help me now. I have sin among you this. Who, did I say that? Or God? He did. I have sin among you. Who did? God. After the manner of Egypt, your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses, and I have made the stink of your camps to come up into your nostrils. That's talking about America too. You go in our cities, it stinks. It just stinks, man. Gang-related murders, rapes, all the other stuff going on just, just stinks, the pollution. This isn't a societal issue uh, and, and a cultural breakdown. This is the result of sin. This is the result of judgment. This is the result of a people who, when they turn their way from God and turn themselves from God and they won't go back, God says, I will increase upon you the pressure of these things until finally... Hopefully, you say, forgive me. Man, we need more preachers to preach this. We need a 1,000, 10,000. And I have smitten you with the blasting that told you that. I've done all these things, and you did not return. It's become stench into my nostrils, yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Verse 11. Are you still here? I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew, overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, I allowed you to go through destruction, and you saw it. I don't know why they die in HIV, living a homosexual lifestyle. Don't know why. We have more STDs in America than we ever had in history. Do you know what an STD is? A sexually transmitted disease. Because you can't live right and keep your br britches up. Right. Jeremiah said you're like a horse. Just always looking. Can't get enough. That's America. You know it is. It's in our culture, it's in our mindset, it's in our music, it's in our television, and it's in the pulpits. That's right. And it's sickening. That's right. I had about enough of it. And preacher, get up there. I don't want to know nothing about your personal life, dude. You keep that garbage to yourself. Oh, it's trendy, and, and people need to know about it. No, they don't need to hear you. Man, I'm about to say some stuff that's probably going to get me censored. Let me just... Mm. I'm already hated, and that's okay. That, that's fine with me. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I told you before, you'll never be able to point your finger at this preacher and say, you didn't tell me. I said, yes, I did, to my own hurt. But that's all right. 
He said, I ever threw like some from Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning, yet you have not returned unto me. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Man, there are some times I lay in my bed in a cold sweat thinking about all the times I should have been killed, all the times I should have been in jail, all the times I should have been lame. Oh, I don't know about you all, but I've escaped so much. <laughs> I got a reason, Brother Mark, to stand up here and shout and dance and run around and say, yeah, I'm free. You didn't save me. You'd have been the first one with a shovel full of dirt to bury me, but God kept me alive. That bullet was made for me, but it didn't do it. That car accident was supposed to take me out, but it didn't happen. That burning building was supposed to fall on me, but it didn't. Man, I tell you stories all day long. Curl your hair and make your curly hair straight. I got a reason to shout. And the greatest reason is he took me from a fiery hell where I was destined to go. Some of y'all don't, don't even remember that. Some of y'all don't appreciate your salvation. I can tell by the way you worship. Got your hands in your pocket, just strolling back and forth. Now, I don't look around because I give a rip about what you're doing, but I can feel it. And I know people. I've been doing this for 30 years. I know, I know church folk. Barely can keep them awake during service. Don't you love me? I love you. And I'm not talking about you. It's somebody else I'm talking to, by the way. No, I'm serious. Got a hand up on mm, I hate this song. Mm, I don't even know the words. Mm, these people are crazy, man. Mm, I came here for the hot dogs. Mm. And I'm over there hollering the best I can because that's all I know to do because I'm glad to be saved. I'm just glad I'm not in a pitchfork somewhere getting barbecued. I should have been. Oh, but you guys are angels. See, I wasn't. I thank God I'm born again. And every day I think about it. Somebody with me, that's true revival when you finally recognize and realize that you're saved and what you were saved from and who did it. That's revival. Man, I'm revived. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Woo. How much time I got? Another 20? I'll give you 100 for another 20. Watch this. Verse 12. Therefore, thus, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this unto thee. Prepare to meet thy maker. Prepare to meet thy God. America's last breath. Prepare to meet thy God. You know what the word prepare means? It means to encounter. Get ready to encounter him. Can I tell you something, America? You're going to encounter God in ways you don't want to. Your preachers told you a lie about who God is. Oh, they gave you a fairy tale. They have. It says to prepare to meet thy God. Can I tell you who, who he's talking about? He's talking about Elohim. Read it. Elohim means the judge. Oh, I want to see the Savior. You're going to see the judge first. The judge is here to see you. you, you you're going to go up there first. Anybody ever stood before a judge? I have. You ever had your knees knocked like in here in Tekoa? I have. I didn't do nothing wrong. I was supposed to testify. Uh, your Honor, is that your name? Huh. Is anybody with me? You're going to meet, prepare to encounter your judge, America. You're going to meet him. And your preachers are not telling you who he is. His eyes are full of fire. He's an awesome God. He created the heavens and the earth. He judges the quick and the dead. And we don't understand God. We don't understand God because I blame the preachers who will not declare how mighty he is and how holy he is. That's why you have no fear in the house of God. You have disdain for the house of God because you have disdain for God. You do not know his sovereignty. You do not know his holiness, and you have no reverence towards him. It's the truth. That's the truth. It's the truth. And that's why we don't see revival in America and the miracles, because we have disdain for God. We just tolerate him for about two hours, maybe, if you show up. 
Verse 13. Remember, I'm talking to somebody else, not you angels. For lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the Lord of hosts is his name. We serve an awesome God, an incredible God. And one day we are going to see him as judge in this nation. He's already walking across this nation and showing us parts of who he is. But the fullness of his authority is about to come on this earth. In America, we're in da danger, and this is the last breath for us. I don't believe America has long to be able to have stability in some type of normal life that we now have the privilege of living. You say that's fear. No, it's fact. It's truth. It's prophecy. And it's a promise to those who have turned their back on God. If you're watching me right now, this don't have to be your last breath. This could be your greatest breath of salvation by receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. If you don't know him today, today is the day to make it right. Come on. You don't have to go the way of the world. You don't have to go the way of judgment. You can find him not only as Elohim judge, but you can find him as Savior. If you backslidden today and this message has touched you in some way, I pray that you would just get it right with God. You, you, that's all you got to do. It doesn't take some great leap of faith. It just takes faith. It just takes action in saying, God, I want to make it right with you today. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Take this message, let it go far and wide, and help us recognize and realize that this is America's last breath. In Jesus' name, amen.